Coming up, Bronny James to the Big Ten, plus a whole lot of blowouts on slate for week two, but I've got some things that you can watch out for in all of the madness. You are locked on Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Locked On Big Ten. I'm your host, Nate Dickinson. Coming up on today's show, we're going to get into all of the big blowouts that we're expecting this weekend in the Big Ten. A full slate of Saturday games for all of the conference's teams, but it's not looking like it's going to be all that close for pretty much all of them. A couple of close ones that will be going down Iowa, Iowa State, but as far as the rest of us, what are some things that you can look out for if you're a Big Ten fan watching what could be a big blowout for your team and you want to switch the channel to see what else is going on and what you should be looking out for? We'll get to all of that here in just a second on Locked On Big Ten. Today's episode is brought to you by Upside. Download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That is the Upside app. $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. We'll tell you more about Upside in just a minute. As always, thank you for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen every single weekday. We give you everything that you need to know. Be sure to follow us on wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube and also on Twitter at Locked On Big Ten. It's Locked On Big One Zero at the end, not T E N. Let's get into the biggest news of the day, and the biggest news of the last couple days has been Bronny James's Twitter account, or Instagram account, I guess I should say. He was posting pictures of his visit to Ohio State over the weekend. If you're a Big Ten fan, you probably already know he was at the Ohio State-Notre Dame game on Saturday night, and a big chant came his way, we want Bronny out of the Ohio State student section. He has the official offer from the Buckeyes. Of course, I don't need to go into the family ties with Ohio State and Bronny James, but this is a guy who is more than a basketball player, obviously. He's been someone who's been a social media influencer icon for a while now. And also, of course, he's the son of LeBron James. So wherever he goes brings a bit of a mystique to him, a publicity with him, and a whole bunch of other things, as well as, we can't forget, a top 50 player in the 2023 class. Some interesting things about Bronny James's recruitment, though. As it's starting to really heat up here, it wasn't all that long ago that Bronny James didn't have any scholarship offers in the D1. Not because he wasn't a good player, or at least you can assume it wasn't because of that. Because he's been a highly ranked recruit for a while now. But with the way that LeBron James does things, I have to imagine that that NBA G League route was at least an option in his mind as someone helping Bronny through the process throughout all of this. And if you're thinking about like, okay, what will LeBron James do? And what would LeBron James suggest that Bronny do? If he wants to go down a similar kind of path, in that you want to be not just a basketball player, but a businessman who wants to not only maximize what you can do on the basketball court, but maximize what what you do on the basketball court allows you to do off of the basketball court too. And if you're looking at it from there, Ohio State's obviously a prime option. USC is also on this list for Bronny James. That would be a prime option if LeBron James was thinking about it. And thinking about, okay, where can this guy make the most money? Where can my son put the most NIL money into his pocket? While also getting himself ready for his basketball career as well, too. I do believe that the NIL money does play a big factor here. Because if you had asked me before the NIL money started out, I would have guessed that Bronny James wasn't going to college. Whether it be in the G League or waiting a year and playing overseas and then going to the draft... I would have wanted to say that it was not worth it for him to go to school. 
And I think that LeBron James would have thought the same too. But the NIL money changes a whole lot. Now there's millions of dollars on the table. And in Bronny James's case, literally millions of dollars on the table for himself alone. So the question becomes, where is the best basketball opportunity? Where is the best financial opportunity? And also, where is the best opportunity for him to really start to grow his brand in the way that his father has so masterfully done? And while I think that LeBron obviously will be letting Bronny do whatever he wants, that's not going to be a problem. If I was thinking about what LeBron James is going to say to Bronny when he's trying to give advice in this situation, I think that the things he would be preaching would be the things that he has done in his own career. He's looked out for himself on the floor trying to be a winner consistently, but he's also looked out for himself as a person and a brand and a moneymaker and a business too. And I think that LeBron James also would have certain eyes set on NBA championships, whereas when looking at a college decision for himself if he had gone that route, or for his son too. I think he would be focusing more, especially now, on how the college decision can help grow who he is again as a brand and basketball player and all of that put together. So is Bronny James coming to Ohio State? When you put all that together, yeah, Ohio State's probably one of the top options, if not the top option out there. Obviously, it would be a huge benefit to get him in Ohio. There would be all sorts of money coming his way from a wealthy university, and he would be playing in one of the big conferences that are going to be left when he gets to school. So, as far as the boxes that need to be checked, Ohio State has everything that you would imagine. Bronny and someone who's thinking the way that LeBron James would think would want. But it's not the only school to remember. USC's out there too. That's going to be a Big Ten basketball school. That's in LA where LeBron already is and obviously is LA and not Columbus, Ohio. So there's a whole bunch of different factors going into this. I guess my closing thought would be that while I normally wouldn't read all that much into a picture posted on an Instagram account, I do think there's got to be some sort of strategy going into when Bronny posts something on his Instagram account with Ohio State stuff. He hasn't done it all that often. If you go over and look at all of his pictures, not really a lot of college gear being repped there. And nothing so clear as the, the kind of, you know, you wearing the uniform, arms around the parents, classic recruiting visit kind of thing. None of that. I think it means a little more coming from Bronny James and being posted on his Instagram account than just about any other recruit. That I will say. If you're wanting to take anything out of one picture being posted, this is the guy to do it with. We're going to break down the weekend in Big Ten football, of course, here on Locked On Big Ten. Too much basketball talk. Basketball, Big Ten, of course, always goes together, but it's football season. And we're going to get into the blowouts this weekend and what I think that you should be watching if your team ends up in a big blowout and you're looking for something else to skim through the channels and take a look at. That's coming up right here on Locked On Big Ten. But before we get into any of that, from cringing at the pump to getting an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts, and it really hurts. That's why I started using Upside. It's an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, you earn cash back thanks to Upside. This isn't a too good to be true kind of thing, and it's really, really simple too. You just go over to the Upside app, download, put in your information, sign up for the account, and then when you start spending money, you start getting cash back through the Upside app. Download the free app and use the promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back for your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code LOCKED. All right, so a whole bunch of blowouts coming this weekend in the Big Ten. Let's be real about it. It's not going to be a lot of close games. You've got a few out there, 
Northwestern's playing Duke. Uh, Washington State isn't supposed to keep it anywhere close with Wisconsin, but it's a Power 5 team, so it's not a huge spread. I think it's at 17 right now. And then uh, another one was, I'm trying to remember the last one off the top of my head. Northwestern plays Duke. Illinois plays Virginia. That's the other one that it was. Uh, those are pretty much the only real close games we're going to have, aside from Iowa and Iowa State. But along with uh, those are a bunch, a bunch of blowouts. And I have for you a list of things that you can go and watch. If you find yourself on Saturday looking at the game your team's playing and saying, man, this is boring. I need to see what else is going on in the Big Ten. Of course, if anything's close, head there. But if you're just looking for, okay, what can we learn here in week two? Here's my list of what I'm going to be looking out for. Starters, and it's been something we've been talking about for a while here. J.J. McCarthy's going to be playing quarterback for Michigan against Hawaii this weekend. That is my number one blowout game to watch just because you have to see how he looks out there. And also, you have to wonder how it matters all that much, really, too. Because, I mean, it's a 50-point favorite. It's it's not like he's not going to look good. So... After these two weeks, what does Jim Harbaugh say? What does he say post-game in this game? After McCarthy, as we can assume, blows out the Rainbow Warriors. I don't know exactly what happens next for Michigan's quarterback situation, but I know I'm a McCarthy guy. I'm a guy who wants him out there full-time. I am on his team, so I want to see him doing well, and I'm going to have my eyes on that game because... While I don't think there's any way this takes him off the field, of course, I do think there's a window for him to maybe jump into if he wants to get closer to being the full-time guy at least earlier in the season. Because I think that is the result you need to get to if you're Michigan. Getting McCarthy to be the full-time quarterback out there at least at some point. There shouldn't be any trouble, of course, for that game there, but if you're A Michigan fan, I think you should want the same, too. You should want McCarthy out there over Cade McNamara. I I like what McNamara does, but it's been clear that McCarthy is the better talent, at least with what the potential caps that everyone has them both at. Other game I want to look at, Wisconsin and Washington State, I mentioned before. It's not exactly a blowout spread, but Wisconsin isn't supposed to have any trouble with this team. I put it as the first real stress test for the Badgers. Because let's face it, alongside Iowa, who did their part last week, when it comes to the teams that you kind of trust least to be able to close out these games, Wisconsin's up there on the list in this conference, right? So when you look at what West Washington State is, it's a 17.5 point underdog, but it's a team that... If you're a Wisconsin fan, you're looking at this early season game and you're thinking to yourself, at least I would be, man, I hope we don't mess this up. Because Wisconsin has that kind of a tendency to it over the last few years with Graham Mertz especially. I don't have to list the ways. There's plenty of reasons why you wouldn't believe that Wisconsin would be able to take care of business the way that they should against this team. But again, with the spread at 17 and a half, You go into this game hoping you can take care of business, but knowing that this is the first, at least minor test on how good are you here. Similar to in the way Northwestern was that test for Nebraska in Ireland, and Nebraska failed it miserably. I think that Washington State is a similar kind of first test. I mean, I guess it's a similar kind of spread when you look at the 13 and 17 point spreads between the two games. So, I guess if Wisconsin's going to fall apart, this would be where we see the first signs of it, right? That's what I'm really trying to say. We saw an Iowa team play a really ugly game last week. And Wisconsin, at least against this team in Washington State, has a chance to play that ugly game again. They shouldn't have any trouble, but I think that is what we're looking for here. Where do the Badgers struggle against this team that's a step up at the very least from all of the FCS and mid-major teams that the rest of the conference is playing this week? Wisconsin's a trouble-prone team. Do they get into trouble again? Does Graham Mertz throw those interceptions again? Is he as inconsistent as he has been? 
those are all those questions we want to have the answers to. Nebraska, of course, has to play again, too, against Georgia Southern. That spread is at 23 points, which is brutal that it's not a bigger spread right now against the Georgia Southern team. But for Nebraska, just give me something to believe in here, guys. I mean, two weeks in, you've given me one good quarter. The last one against North Dakota, as far as anything that I can really, really put my arm around and say, hey, this is quality Nebraska team. There's nothing here. I mean, I said it against Northwestern that if they lost that game, there was no way that you had the confidence of anybody going forward. But then you struggle out the gates against North Dakota, have to score three unanswered touchdowns at the end, I think it was, to end up making that score look respectable. It's just getting uglier for Nebraska here. And I think you need to be able to blow somebody out to start to build something back. But that's what I need. I need a blowout. I need a convincing win. I need something to believe in with the Nebraska Cornhuskers because right now I've lost all of it. And I was getting pretty high there near the end of the offseason on what this team could be. Now it's all gone. And I, I hope that I can see something a little better against Georgia Southern. Only other game I had as far as something that I could keep an eye on in these blowouts over the weekend, Indiana's Connor Bazelak looked pretty good against Illinois in week one. That team's hosting Idaho this weekend. There's not even a spread listed, but just how good is this guy? How good can he be? He's going to have a chance to air it out again this Saturday and really show off his talent. And I'm not saying that that'll translate over to other Big Ten opponents, but at least from what I saw against Illinois, he looked really solid and... I don't think he carries Indiana to anything special, but as far as the bottom of the Big Ten goes, there's going to be four or five teams maybe in that range where if you have the best quarterback out of them, maybe you end up at the top of that pack. And instead of being like 12, 13, 14, you could be like 9, 10, 11 in the conference at the end of the season. I mean, I think that's what we're talking about with Indiana when it comes down to it, when we really boil things down. But I mean, having the quarterback's the first step, and Bazelak looked pretty good for a guy who had not 100% won that job going into camp. So I want to say just how good he looks, but that's my last little kind of tidbit on where exactly I have my eyes this weekend. So watch your team, see if they win, but if it's turning into a blowout, I'd say watch that Michigan game, see J.J. McCarthy out there. Of course, watch Wisconsin and see if they blow up against Washington State or show any of the inconsistencies we're getting used to seeing. And then Nebraska and Indiana, Nebraska just needs to do something. Indiana will try and see if that quarterback's worth watching going forward. That's a look around the blowouts in the Big Ten this weekend. Of course, a couple of good games, too, that we need to get to. We'll get to all of that in our preview of the matchups coming up tomorrow. Matt Sheehan will begin to get into the best bets of the weekend, too. And, of course, I need to still wrap things up with you here on Locked On Big Ten as well. So let's get into everything that happened over the last day here in the Big Ten in the last couple of days, too, in just a minute here on the show. All right, so as we wrap things up, just a couple of things to get to here on the program. Uh, first off, a recruiting update. We did have one commitment on the football field. Unranked running back Jashawn Benjamin has committed to Rutgers. Also, they had that long snapper we told you about. He got a ranking up to two stars, was unranked before. But uh, again, as I mentioned, long snappers not really getting a huge amount of uh, love all that much in the rankings anyway. A Big Ten scores from yesterday. Only big one to tell you about. On the volleyball courts, number two, Nebraska defeated number 17, Creighton, in five sets. Close one, but the Cornhuskers pull it out. And only a couple of events on the Big Ten schedule for today. Michigan Field Hockey's hosting Miami of Ohio. And Indiana on Northwestern Volleyball. Both play a pair of matches later on tonight, too. Of course, tomorrow we've got football to preview. A big weekend in Big Ten sports. Matt Sheehan's in to go over the best bets with the lines provided from Bet Online. Until you get back here with the show with us, be sure to tune in to any of the other Big Ten podcasts. Find your team locked on Spartans, Hoosiers, Golden Gophers, Badgers, any of them, Buckeyes. Go on and search and see if we have a show for you. 
network's always growing. We don't have quite all the Big Ten schools yet, but it's getting pretty close. We're adding a couple schools, I think, in the last couple of months we have even, and always looking for more too. So be sure to be consistently searching on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for those shows, and of course for Locked On Big Ten. Locked On Big One Zero, not T E N, wherever you get your podcasts. And then I'm Nate Dickinson at Nate with Sports on Twitter too. Thanks for listening in. We'll talk to you tomorrow to wrap things up for the week on Locked On Big Ten.